Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Creative Thrive, where we celebrate the stories of those who dare to dream and create beyond boundaries. I'm your host, Tabitha Coffey, and today I am thrilled to welcome a guest whose life and work embodies the essence of creativity and transformation and whose artistry and imagination transcends conventional boundaries. Her remarkable talent has brought the essence of beauty and innovation to the forefront of the fashion and art worlds. Her hands have not only adorned the faces of countless celebrities and illuminated iconic publications like Vogue, Harper's Bazaar and Vanity Fair, to name a few, but have also played a pivotal role in shaping the narratives of countless renowned brand campaigns. Her most personal venture, and we'll dive into it, the Boscar Project, is a testament to her belief in the limitless possibilities of artistic expression. Boscar combined body painting, photography, and live performance to create an extraordinary exploration of art's capacity to blur the realms between reality and fantasy. It challenged viewers to question what they really saw. Her story is about the power of artistic freedom, the impact of fearless collaboration, and the endless pursuit of creativity that knows no bounds and whose work continues to challenge and redefine the canvas of creativity. Um, she is a true innovator and genuinely a really cool human. So please welcome to Creative Thrive, Vicky Stekel. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Tabata. How Those are, are magical, magical saying that you just uh, put it out there. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for you know, reminding me of who I am because sometimes I do forget who I am. <laughs> You know what, don't we all? So um, that's part of what this podcast is about, to celebrate creatives. So I'm glad that I can remind you of who you are. Um, To give everyone listening a little bit of context, you and I met a lifetime ago. (laughs) We'll call it a lifetime ago. It certainly feels like that. It probably was, and it was probably maybe 10 years ago. Um, Was it 10 years ago? Maybe. Maybe more. Maybe more. And We'll leave it like that. (laughs) Something like that. And and Boscar was really in the early stages, I believe, when, when you and I first met. And I kept seeing all these images and they blew my mind. And it took me a minute. And, you know, for everyone listening... Go on Vicky's Instagram, look at all the images, you can check it out. But it took me a minute because we didn't have AI then. And I couldn't work out what I was seeing. Was it art? Was it a painting? Was it a drawing? Was it a photograph? Was it a person? Or was it not? Or and it was so expansive. I'm, I say Photoshop because a lot of people thought it was Photoshop. Mm -hmm. until they participated in the project and they realized it was not Photoshop. That's the only reason why I said that. Yeah. It, you have to all go and look at it, but it, but it was mind bending. And I think that is part of what a creative does. So let's start a little bit in the beginning to catch everyone up if they're not familiar with you. And I'm sure many of the people listening to me are, you know, your journey started not here in New York. You are from the Dominican Republic. You moved to New York in the 80s, right, when you were a teenager. And moving to New York, especially New York in the 80s, how did that influence your creativity then, but also how you see creativity now? Uh, When I first moved here, you know, I always, you know, I was a teenager, right? So I always wanted to come to New York. My mom had moved here in the 70s. And we didn't come later on to the 80, in 1980, actually, to be a sack. And I really had this sort of feeling about New York that it's undescribable how I wanted to be here. So we ended up in Brooklyn and Bay Ridge. And I remember, you know, the first five years, like you didn't travel alone. My mom was very protective of us. 
But, you know, I, once in a while I started escaping and started going into the city and being on the end train where it goes through the bridge, you know, you can see at that time the towers and you see the whole um, New York and that's mm -hmm. sort of magical way for me where there was, if I can describe it, it just gave me this boost of energy that I didn't know how to describe that energy. I don't know where that energy was going to go. I don't know what I wanted to do. But sooner, soon later, I found out that definitely um, art was my my thing. And the reason how I knew is because I always loved the trains with all the graffitis on it, where, you know, my mom would be like, let's not get into that train because you're going to get into trouble, you know. But for me, I was attracted. I was attracted to all that graffiti. And, you know, I don't know. I knew it was illegal. I knew that, right, that you couldn't mm -hmm. do that. But I wanted to do it. And I, I admire, like, I love when that train came and I got on it because it was felt full of, it was like a boost of energy for me it's really interesting like I, it's hard to explain that that feeling that it gave me do you look to outside influences a lot for your creativity even still today I mean today New York still has a little bit of graffiti but not like in those days right yeah. those days were magical those days were magical and it was vibrant you could feel you could feel electricity um in the air so obviously that's evolved and changed but how do you find that creativity now it sounds like looking at the graffiti and looking at those things unlocked an artist in you because you weren't a makeup artist yet right you no, hadn't started I didn't know what I wanted to be no 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 there were so many things I did before I started doing makeup you know I knew it was definitely in the art but I didn't know you know what sort of art. So I experienced with music, I experienced with, uh, with uh, acting, you know, I went to acting school for a while. Like I did all of that, but no, definitely not. I, I had no idea that, you know, I was going to be a makeup artist or I was going to do what I'm doing now. It sort of just fell into my lap. I think today for me, you know, my creativity comes from humble places, you know, uh, volunteering at, at a church, you know, through the pandemic was super inspiring for me in many ways. You know, it's also looking back at my life itself, um, I get creative by like things that I've done that I put away for a long time. And then all of a sudden I remember Oh wow! I did this. You know, it's 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 interesting because earlier with the introduction that you 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 know describe me, it's sort of like wow. You know, that's that's you know, did I do that? Yes, I did. Did I do that? Yes, I did. And it's it's really interesting to sort of remind myself, you know, how much you accomplished. Because I think today, like we keep on going and busy and doing this and doing that and. A lot of things are happening with technology and, and social media. And like, we sort of have to keep up with all of that. You know, we don't have to, but it's kind of fun to do. That's the challenge of it. I, I like challenges. Back in the 80s, you know, New York was scary, but there was something really magical about being scared. You know, it sort of gave you something. It sounds a little yeah. dramatic. No, it's no, it's the adrenaline. You know, it's Italian. It's just like, oh, wow, you know, it's dangerous there. You know, now that I was looking for trouble because I was always, you know, a person that didn't want trouble, but it sort of gave you a feeling. And I think when you have a, that accumulation of feelings, something explodes inside of you. Something happens. And I think that's what happens with the Boscar project was that, you know, I, I, I'm not a photographer. If you ask me to take your picture, it's probably going to be all wrong. Lighting is going to be bad and <laughs> whatever else. <laughs> But when it came to document my artwork of people that I started painting in the basement, then all of a sudden it, it turned into something. You know, it just sort of appeared in front of me. It was almost like a gift that just... Which, well, don't you... Know. you I, w I want to get into that because, again, Boscar still to this day. I, I have... I was saying to Vicky before we started recording, Vicky gifted me a beautiful print of an image and I have it in my office, I'm staring at it right now. It's on my wall in my office and it, it's just extraordinary. Still, I look at it and I'm curious and wondering what I'm seeing because the thing that you just talked about with New York um, creating this kind of danger and explosion, the feeling of it, that's what, for me, 
creativity translates to when you whew, when you let it out of your body whatever it looks like whether it's doing hair doing makeup painting writing you let it out and it's that release of all those endorphins and excitement and fear and edginess kind of pouring out of you and that is what Boz Color Project looked like for me it looked very emotional and it looked very different and that made it even more emotional it didn't look linear every model that you presented every way you painted it went from quite feminine looking and feminine colors and flowers and you know what you would interpret as more of a feminine feel to to things that look quite um sad and angry and edgy right like you could go through all these emotions so tell us how it started because you said it was a gift i i will reframe that and say it was just something waiting to explode out of you <laughs> it's interesting I'm going to try to make a really long story short. I was hired to do a job, a body painting job in the Dominican Republic. It turns out I ended up buying more paint than I needed. Never used it. So I had it in the basement for a long time. It was one New Year's Eve. My brother and I were in the basement and he's a musician and he, you know, he was playing his music, blah, blah, blah. And I just look at the paint. I was like, hey, let me paint you. So I painted him and I took a few pictures with my phone. And that was it. Then I showed it to a few people and a friend of mine, she's like, I want to get painted. And I'm like, well, what are we going to do after that? All I have is just a little camera, you know, and we did it. We took a little, you know, painted her for hours. We were just having fun. And one day, I think it was second or first time I painted her, she went upstairs to the apartment and there was one of my paintings in the back. And she just blend right in right before she took a shower. It was like right in front of the bathroom. And I said, wait right there. Hold on. <laughs> took a camera, a picture. And then all of a sudden you didn't see her. All you saw was that. And, you know, after that, I started, I started to play with it with iPhoto. That's what I mm -hmm. did my little editing. Right. And then uh, all of a sudden I just started to, you know, practice more because I really liked what I saw. It was, it was weird. It was different. You know, I didn't really show it to anyone. And then I got kicked out of Instagram and I didn't know how else I wanted to create another account. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? I, I did, you know, all these amazing images of references and I had a lot of followers that came in just to get inspired. And that was fun then, you know, now what am I going to do? So I started to post those images of my friends and um, family members that I had painted and got a lot of attraction. And I have to say like Instagram is that bad and good and mm -hmm. all of that. You know, we take benefits out of that, but we also hate it because it had changed our business quite a lot, right? Mm -hmm. It's not where it used to be. So make a long story short, again, I... um. I started to get noticed a lot and people started to come around and then all of a sudden it became to, it came to a point where I had to buy a real camera and lights because it got to get a little serious and things went on, you know, really well for, for a while and to, I um, signed a contract with an art dealer in LA and that was really awesome. You know, we're still, um, we're still working together, but right now he's, He's doing something else and, and I haven't really painted in a while. I, I stopped doing that for a bit. Although I I uh I got that little You've got the itch. I got the itch You've and I did itch. I got that itch again and I started exper experimenting with different lights and, and different paint, more neon and all of that. It's it's fun. But then uh sellotape came in and now it's like it's <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about sellotape. Let me just backtrack a little bit because I think, um, <laughs> first of all, the things that strike me is that from something that just felt playful, which I think is where the kernel of creativity comes from, something that just feels joyous and fun, right? You saying to your brother, hey, let me use this paint and paint you while 
you're listening to music and hanging out, that grew, right? Not only did it capture other people's imagination saying, we love what you're doing, paint me, it, it just captured um, your imagination and your creativity to, to grow it out. I mean, you actually had yeah. your work yeah. showing in art galleries. Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting because it came from a night of, you know, not doing anything, just having a great time with my brother and drinking and having fun. It was a New Year's Eve or something like that. Instead of going out to a party, which I was bored with, we decided to paint. And then all of a sudden, here I am a few years later, not even art dealer, commissions, galleries, <laughs> you know, I got a lot of attention, which is, it was great. You know, it, it was really amazing because it came from nowhere. It came from leftover paint and a night of having fun. And then friends coming over that invited themselves because they saw it. But I didn't see it the way they saw it. I just saw it like, look what I just did. This is this, this is fun. This is great. You know, you want to have fun? Let's do it. Let's get a bottle of tequila and let's paint you. And, but you know, I, but I, think you that, I think for people listening, that's a really important point, though, because I think especially in... I'll talk about my medium of hair. You're a makeup artist, your medium of makeup. Sometimes people take it very seriously, myself included. I'm putting my hand up, right? So, you know, it's very serious. And I think part of that seriousness is because that's how we make our money. That's how we build a career. That's how we get noticed. So we have to take it seriously in, yeah. on one aspect. But when you take it too seriously, the joy gets sucked out of it. The creativity boring. can get sucked out of it. It becomes boring, right? Yeah. So I think the, f the fact that you took what mm. you do, wow, that was not a train, but it sounds like a train just drove through yes. my living room. No, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. And for me, you know, like, yes, money is important, but it's not, right? For me, it is about... You know, if there's a good project and I can be part of it and there's no money, I'm in. If it's really good and it's worth my time. And, you know, I, I, I'm a huge believer in that and anything that I do. And yes, uh, Bosco project was really great until it got serious, until we needed a website, until we needed people to, to help out and, and to do certain things for us. And that is when I lost, honestly, all interest. You know, when the serious part comes in, when you need a computer to do things, this is where for me, you know, the seriousness of that just become too involved and I lose sort of interest and it just becomes a repetitive thing, you know, and then I get bored. When it becomes repetitive, it, I, I get really bored. And for me, I, I think when I hear that yeah. part of that is showing, part of that is showing the creativity, right? Part of that is showing what a creative is like that when it gets too serious, um, it takes the freedom out, right? The shackles get put mm -hmm. on and let's be honest, you don't like, you are a free woman. You're a free spirit. I know you are. <laughs> so you don't want anything shackling um, you or your creativity. Yeah. So Definitely. how now that you do reflect on it and you reflect on those things, what, motivates you to keep creative and how how do you fuel that creativity now i know you work with a lot of brands to do major major campaigns and i know you work with celebrities and shoots and fashion etc um but how how do you stay creative on your own terms now well you know creativity is everywhere you know Getting out of bed is creativity, right? Because sometimes you don't want to get out of bed. So you get creative. You're like, you know what? I need to go wash my face. So I need to go and do this and I need to go do that. You know, creativity, like I said, is everywhere. And it's about you finding it and, and that motivation, what keeps you going. Like for me, I have a dog, so I have to walk my dog. So that is my motivation. That is my creativity. As far as create, letting my juices go, I find anything that I can create with, you know, whether it's cooking, whether it's, you know, right now I'm painting shirts to send it out to a designer in LA, 
you know, so I just like to keep moving. Like don't, st I don't stop. I, I, I always, my head is always going a million, like what else can I do? What else can I do? How can I do this? And how can I do that? And, you know, I, I'm a believer that if you create things, it will definitely come. And it happened with, with, with Oscar. I created that. It came, you know, it was really successful. I did really well. I'm very happy. I did it. I stopped painting. So I need to get back on it again. I painted a few people last year, but you know, it's, it's like, okay, what else, you know, what else can I do? And, you know, and again, you know, being in the business that I'm in, you always get these awesome jobs and these awesome people that you work with and you collaborate with and meeting different people all the time. I think it's, it's, it's what keeps you going and the challenge of not knowing whether or not I'm going to work tomorrow. <laughs> Life because as a freelancer. Life as a freelancer. We don't know. And we don't know. And I think those sort of things keep me on my toes as far as like, what else can I do? How can I be ahead of the game? How can I create something for the future? And it, that's what Boscar did. Boscar actually, you know, through the pandemic, I made good money selling my art. Right? I was not doing makeup because you couldn't. But thankfully that kept me going so you know who knew that 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 night of playing around was going to save me for for a few months when the pandemic happened right it's it's interesting though because when i when i was looking into how you started your career um because when i met you you were as i said already established so when i looked in to how you started your career and you said earlier that you tried many things before it led you to make up. I, I read an interview and you were talking about when you first became a makeup artist, you're a makeup assistant to Pat McGrath. Correct. And that wasn't planned either. That was, no. she needed an assistant. You were there she saw your potential. You were great at it. And I was a good story assistant. evolved. <laughs> and obviously a good makeup artist. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is by assisting, you don't learn how to do makeup. Sometimes you don't know how to do makeup, right? But you learn how to be an assistant and how to stay on your lane and how to, how can you help the person that you're assisting to become better what they are? And then you learn from that. Not just the makeup, but you know, a lot. There's a lot more to learn than makeup. A hundred percent. But I, but I think the interesting thing for me is, and I'm not implying that you know that was that. What I'm saying is that felt like a catalyst to open the door to a new world for you. That then Absolutely. planted that seed of creativity in you. That you were like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I like this. This, this the, is what I want to do. This lights a fire in me and I can yeah. feel, I can feel this to then go on and become who you have become, which is interesting. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Like, you know, I remember the first, the second job I did with Pat, we were in, uh, we were in Florida, we were on the Keys and I just, you know, I, they were shooting a cover for Vogue with Stephen Mizell and, you know, I was underneath the coconut tree. <laughs> Now. And I just knew. I looked at the entire, it was, it, I can describe it almost like a scene of a movie. Everyone working and me in the back, just sitting under my coconut. It was like a tree that goes, I mean, if you've been, if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. It's a tree that sort of like comes to see. <sighs> and um, yeah, and I just, actually brought tears to my eyes. And I was like, this is what I want to do. Finally, finally, I found something that I can totally relate to that. And I want to do that. Yes. And working with Pat was really amazing. Cause I, like I said, not just makeup because makeup is like, you know, but working with someone that talented and to see how she functions and she deals with things and which are really important, as you know, like we get higher for our talent, but we also get higher for our personality and who we are and how we handle things. 100%. And how you, you know, you accept rejections and lots of, you know, things that goes with being a freelancer. <laughs> with, because you have such a diverse um, and innovative body of work, 
Are there any new frontiers that you look at now that you would like to explore, especially because the landscape has changed? Social media has changed. Um, AI has changed things. They haven't even started. <laughs> there are so many. There are so many different um, changes within the world, and also within the industry. Is there something you look at now and you think, "Hmm, I want to try that. I want to. I want to play with that." Um, right now, I couldn't say. But if anything, I would like to try with AI for sure. I definitely want to try something. What? I don't know. But definitely something in the technology of AI, I think is really interesting. It's not going anywhere. I don't think we should be afraid of it. I think we should use it to our benefit and play with it. I don't think we creatives are going anywhere. I don't think we are going to be replaced by AI. A lot of people might think I am <laughs> disagreeing <laughs> with me, but I believe that if you know how to play with it, we are, it's actually to our advantage. You can actually make sure it, it will help you develop as a creative. It will just, you know, use it as your partner, right? So there's something there that intrigues me. I don't know what yet. It will probably, you know, I'm not really good technical wise, but I think eventually, like I would give it a few more years, every, people like myself will be able to play with it in a more understanding way. Because right now I don't understand it and a lot of people don't understand it. Yeah. At least people that I know, they don't understand I think we're it, all but... trying. I mean, I, unless you're a, you know, maybe a developer or someone that is on, um, you know, software and, and looking at these things all the time, I think the it is opening up for all of us. But I agree. I think we can use it as our partner and actually as our assistant. Yeah. I look at it as an assistant. Yeah. Um, would be a way to use it, not as it's not in the driver's seat, it's in the passenger no. seat. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm definitely not, a, I'm not afraid of anything. You know, I'm tired of being afraid. I've been afraid my whole life, you know, and I'm just not into being afraid anymore. It's like risk it. You have been you afraid know? your whole life? That surprises me because you, yeah, so yeah. ballsy. Well, it's, it kind of, you, you know, you shape into that eventually, right? Because you, I guess for me, I opened my eyes uh, sooner enough, but, you know, growing up like in a, in religion for me, I don't want to talk about it, that mm -hmm. politics and religious two things. I don't talk about it, but in my own experience with religion, they make you afraid. They embrace you. They in, uh, the injected in you, let's yeah. just say, that. Yeah, yeah. injected in you since a very young age. And I went through different sorts of religions, you know, between Catholic and evangelist and my mom being a, being a Jehovah witness, which I would not, you know, but um, yeah, for me, from my own experience, I'm not saying for anybody else, but from my own experience, I think religion got me a little scared of things, you know, and that's all I'm going to say about religion. No, no, I, I, I think we could take the word, we could take that word, right, religion, and we could replace it with many other things. We could replace it with politics. We could replace it with our own limiting beliefs and the limiting yeah. beliefs that we have about ourselves, right? So I think all of us, for whatever it is, have had that fear, um, projected onto us from many different mediums. How did you overcome that, especially as an artist? Because I have found that the number one thing that holds so many people that are creatives back is fear. Well, the interesting thing is if you come into my place, you see a lot of rosaries, not because I'm religious, because they are pieces for me. Mm -hmm. an artist made them um sometimes you see like if i go anywhere in the world with, with my travels that i have been to maybe i'll find you know rosary among something else like a virgin that i got from venezuela made of antique fabrics like i appreciate the art of it i think the art is absolutely beautiful for me that's you know i'm attracted to that part of that an artist made that 
So, um, and how do I overcome that? You know, eventually I just, I guess traveling, you know, being in Thailand and talking to Buddhists and being in certain places and talking to different, you know, Israel and Turkey and going to different places and talking to different people and then see their, their views and what they believe and who they are, you know, just, just all of a sudden, like everything just started to like, you know, just, yeah. The windscreen was cleaned. The windscreen yeah, of the film that you looked through was cleaned. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, I'm like, wait a minute, hold on one second. But these people, they're Buddhists and they believe in that. And they, you know, I really like how they think and I like the personality. I like how calm they are. I like, and then this person is Catholic and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, who am I? I'm nobody. Well, I am somebody, but when it comes to believing, mm-hmm. like I do believe in the universe. I look, I do believe in doing good. You receive good. I believe in, you know, not being, not doing bad things or, but do I go to church? And I, no, I, I don't do that anymore because when I first moved to this country, my mom, every Sunday, church, church. And then one day the people that were races and the building that I live in, they were all at church praying. And then I saw how hypocritical that was, because if you're going to go all week being mean to your neighbors and being mean because I'm Hispanic and you know, whatever it is, then all of a sudden you're over there being all beautiful and pure. And, you know, so that I just felt like it was very hypocritical. And I, all of a sudden I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm afraid of human, a human was the one that's dictating, mm. you know, this scaredness uh, feeling to me, right? So that sort of eventually, it took time, but eventually slowly I was able to mold that. Did that did that happen quite young or did it take a while? Because I, I think what I'm hearing in a, in a condensed version of, of what you're saying is that judgment bigotry right of other people can really hold us back in so many different ways of of being the full expression of who we are and showing up as our magnificent selves or being really authentic because we're scared of how we're going to be judged or what's going to happen to us if we're just really honest about this is who I am right this is who I am this is how I be this is who I love this is what I look like if we're not following those societal quote unquote rules. Rules. Um, But does, did that fear or that residual fear, because it takes a while for us to work through that. It doesn't happen overnight, right? It's a process of walking through that. Do you feel freer as a creative now? Because I think that's what holds creatives back. It's the fear of judgment. It's the fear of being yeah, laughed at. Yeah, I'm definitely fear of... off a little bit, but um, I'm definitely more free. You know, I think Boscar Project really liberated all of that in me. And the reason why is because I really played with the ideas of there's one series that I did. It was very religious, but it wasn't because the woman was completely nude and she had a Bible and this blood on, you know, red mm-hmm. paint, which is signifies blood and the Bible on the hand, which, you know, I never showed it to anyone. And my mom went it because they would think I am possessed. Something is definitely wrong with me, but I think painting and, you know, the funny thing is unconsciously, every time I created something like, let's say it was 12 hours, 10 hours, depending, you know, the endurance of the model of of the talent, it lasted forever. Right. So at the end, after everything is done and I'm just tired and I'm in the shower and I'm like, I can't wait to see the results. And then I looked at the images and it's almost like, who did that? And what was I thinking? And sometimes it takes me like even six months to realize what I've done which is really interesting and where I was because I was, it was no intention, no like, Oh, you know, plan. I'm going to paint the girl like a nun. No, it's just, it happened. Like we, 
got a mirror de delivered and the mirror had this big foamy things and I just put it in the head and it started from there and then I saw the Bible and I'm like, great. You know, so nothing was really planned, let's say. Mm. And that to me is liberation. It was just kind of like a self unconsciously self um, growth, self liberation yeah. from, from moldings of us human. It, yeah. It feel it feels like, again, the translation that I'm feeling, the feeling that I'm getting is that the fear right? Even residual fear. I'm not saying you're walking around in fear, but that residual fear or restriction is another word of fear because fear restricts us and constricts us. So that restriction, um, it sounds like fed into your creativity. Yeah. And you, again, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And especially like having a girl, like not everyone was completely naked, but you know, a lot of times the body, you know, I realized it was better when the body was completely nude. And the mm -hmm. reason why was the paint just flowed better. Not because I wanted to see, you know, no, it's yeah, just yeah. The paint itself, you know? So th I think that all of that, it really plays a big part of my life. It was almost like therapy in a way. And I have heard it from talent that have said the same thing. They said that they felt liberated because also one woman in particular, the first time I painted her, she was not naked. The second time she just wanted to explode because after what the first time I painted her, she felt something really good, some, something empowering in herself, like something that she just felt so free about just being whatever and just giving up with the idea of like my hair has to be perfect you know you're in front of the camera and you want to have your lips perfect everything is perfect and in this case no you're a mess you're a mess of paint all over and we don't know where the next splash of paint is coming from or where is it going to end up i i mean i i would agree with that as a viewer which is you know, what I said to you earlier, when I would look at the images, they evoked different emotion in me, whether I would look at something and say, that's quite feminine and, and soft feeling and maternal and, you know, all the, all the words that we may think of as a, a feminine archetype. And then I would look at something and go, oh, that feels angry. And in a, not in a bad way, that's not a judgment way, but I could look at no. this image and go, oh, I feel anger when I look at that. Like, I just want, I can feel anger exploding on the page or I can feel, yes, liberation or freedom or that looks really erotic and interesting. You know, there were all these different emotions that came from seeing that work. So it's interesting to hear you as the creator say that you felt and sounds like channeled those emotions without even realizing until you saw the end result. Yeah. You know, it's really, it's really, every time I, you know, I, I, I haven't talked about uh, Boscar for a very long time. I think one of, one of the last time I talked about, it was actually a, a radio station, right? So it's interesting that here I am like half, so many years later and talking about Boscar and, and, and looking back, you know, and I'm being all in all honesty, like it was never a plan. It was never like, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And this is kind of going to happen never. And it still is. It's like, whatever I wake up in the morning, if I feel like I have a few projects that I do want to do for boss car, but you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to wait until the time is right. Cause it's all about timing for me. And, uh, I think mentally I'm in a different state in my life and the black light represents a lot for me because I've been doing a lot of black light stuff, but I mm. think it's time to move forward from that it's all neon which you know I'm, I'm curious to see why i'm doing the black light it means something i don't know what yet like i said nothing is planned and things do come you know as i go it's I, like I having like, a mento. <laughs> yeah but i like that you say, i like that you say that because i i i think for other people listening to this it gives them permission to 
to explore it and go, I don't know why I'm going through this phase, dot, 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 whatever this phase is. I don't know why I'm going through this black light phase. I don't know why I'm so attracted to neon at the moment. I don't know why I'm so into whatever. But I feel like it always feeds our creativity in some way. And the best thing to do is to follow it, not to clamp it do down. It. Don't put Just it in the it. box, yeah. right? Let the genie out. Yeah. Just do it. You know, that the only way to find out is to do it. And who, and who, who, who is to judge that is wrong? Who is to judge that is bad? Who? Yeah. <laughs> People that don't understand it. Yeah, and, and honestly, I think, you know, even saying all art um, is so incredibly subjective and also even when it evokes maybe uh, an emotion that isn't the best one, like I don't like that, it's yeah. still evoking emotion. It's still yeah. making someone feel something and that exactly. is extraordinary. Exactly. You know, that's, that's, that's the thing and it comes with acting. You don't like an actor because, you know, he did a role. Well, he did a good role. You didn't like him. He gave yeah. you something. You know, yeah. it's, it's all about emotions. And emotions don't always have to be happy. Emotions can vary. And I think that's that's part of life. And, yeah. in, and, and in real life, we go through different emotions. We don't wake up every day happy. We don't go to bed every day happy. You know, it's a roller coaster. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring us. Right. Well, and I, you know, and I think for me in, in reflection of Boscar and you saying you haven't talked about it for a, for a while because it was a while ago, um, my mild obsession with it is not to de detract or distract, you know, distract anyone from the amazing work that you do now and the work that you do as a makeup artist and on ad campaigns and, you know, for magazines. It's not to distract from any of that. The, the emotion that you brought to that project though, it felt like you put yourself out there. It felt like I you did. fed your soul through and it. And I didn't care. Right. And, and I think as a viewer, we can see that you bared your soul. Yeah. And I think the other thing is interesting, especially a lot of makeup artists that I talk to and hairdressers, often we become so trained with our craft that it has to be air quote perfect, so right? I'll, tell you frozen. I'll unfreeze. It's just uploading. Sometimes in our, in our craft, we're taught, you know, the line has to be perfect. It has to be perfectly symmetrical. It has to be placed exactly like this. It's got to be done this way. And that's all fine, but it's also restricting. And I think for, to see the explosion of color, the fusion of the different mediums through, you know, backdrop, body paint, live model, all the things, that performance art really, that you did, it still had such a quality of beauty in a really chaotic environment. And that's something that I want people to remember. <laughs> that's nice. That's very nice. Right? I, I, I think that's something that's important though as a creative, right? Sometimes yeah. creativity is chaos. Yeah, chaos. And, you know, a lot of people didn't understand that they still don't and it's okay. Maybe eventually in the future, you know, my, my art dealer, James, he always said to me, Vicky, you know, he, he, you know, I met him. I was, uh, I, I, um, I showed around Art Basel in Miami 2015, I believe it was. And that's how I met him. And he, you know, he said to me, I really like your work, but you know, it's a little, it, it, it was a little too much, I guess. Right. So he kept in contact with me for another year before he gave me a contract. And he said, you know, it's not the right time. You know, I don't think people are ready for this, but I'll give it a try and see what happens. We did really well for a while, you know, commissions and shows and blah, blah, blah. I think he did, you know, we were good partners, but you know, he always said that. Did I having... I think everyone listening, you can get mad at me. It's okay. I'm going to say it. It happens to women a lot. So I'm going to preface that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen to males at all, especially male creatives. I know it happens to male creatives. 
it happens to females and also female creatives, right? So that's my preface. Being told that we're a lot, too much. It's too much. It's too loud. It's too big. It's too bright. It's too shiny. <sighs> right? Did that, did that make you turn the volume down, leave um, the volume where it is, or turn it I all left the way the volume. Up? No, I, I actually raised the volume, you know? That's what I did. I raised the volume because I'm not for everybody, you know, and I, I'm content where I am. I think creating for me is the most important thing and not by likes and hearts and comments. You know, I, I, I don't really care about that. I know I had a really great moment and a lot of people really appreciate it. They just, some didn't understand it, what it was mm -hmm. like. And I made a lot of noise. I know I did. And I understand what my, what James was trying to tell me. It's just people were not ready for that because it, it's too different. Yeah. It's too different. And not everyone understands something that is different. It takes yeah. them time. Okay. But I, but I still love that you said you turned the volume up. So anyone <laughs> listening, when someone tells you to turn that volume down, you're too much, just amp the volume up a little bit more and then show them what loud really looks like. Yeah. Um, so I That's have a, exactly I, what I did. <laughs> I love that. So I have a couple more questions. Um, what, what defines creativity for you? What defines, oh my God, it is, it is, it, it's so many ways to define creativity. You know, I, I said that earlier, like getting up in the morning for me, it's creativity you know, being able to put up with, you know, lots of things that happen during the day that you don't know that could change. Anything can change for you in a, in a, in a matter of a second. So if I would say what really does, I mean, I honestly, at this moment, I wouldn't have an answer for that, but for me, it's like just doing it. It feels, it. when I hear that to me, it feels like, creativity is not an end result. It's a way you process through life. It's true. Yeah. Best way you can describe it. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's what it sounds like to me. And then this is a question that I ask everyone and there is no right or wrong answer. It's just a really interesting question to ask people is, do you think creativity is nature or nurture? Or both? I think it's both. I think it's both. And the reason why I'm saying that is because a lot of people don't know that they can be creative until you pick up a brush. And I think everyone has that. I mean, every child is an artist, if you think about that. Mm -hmm. You give them a pen, they will draw. You give them music, they will play. Everyone has that in them. It's about whether or not you're interested or whether or not that's something. I think we all have that. Yeah, I agree. I And I think that... Um, we can be creative in so many different things. I mean, there oh are account God. accountants are creative, right? With, with math genius, geniuses are creative with sequencing and, and looking at numbers and seeing patterns. So there's so many yeah. different ways that creativity can manifest. Absolutely. Even in your um, kitchen. I mean, that's a hundred percent. You are the beauty director for cello tape magazine. Correct. Tell me, tell me about that and what, what that looks like. I, my understanding is that it's a newer magazine. Well, -ish. um, a little history, um, Michael, uh, Dai, who owns, uh, Sellotape, him and I, I met him when he was at the fall magazine and he suggested, uh, for the fall to do an interview of Waska project and all that. So they did a beautiful um, interview with my work and feature some of my work, which is really nice. And then Michael left after, I don't know how long. And about two years ago, he started sellotape and, um, he needed a little help and he contacted me and I said, absolutely. And I started working with him. I think it was in August that he approached me about that. And that was really amazing. I'm super happy because he's giving me all the freedom that I never had in my life. You know, with working with the people that I want, creating anything I want. Michael's like, yeah, just do it. 
and it's 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 going really well. We now have a team of like twelve mm-hmm. creators, and like so far, I have about five to six beauty stories that I've done that has not been published or uploaded. It's an mm-hmm. online magazine, and uh, hopefully, uh, Michael's plans mm-hmm. are that maybe in a year from now we're going to probably print twice a year. Nice. Well, I love I love that, and I love seeing I love seeing your work. And um, if you do decide to bring the new version of Boscar back, I told you this last time, I want to be a model. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> I would totally be a model for you. Um, I have to say, not many can, yeah, not many. One other person comes to mind, perhaps, that I would actually um, strip down to my skivvies for I and, love this. and be painted. That would make me profoundly uncomfortable because I am the person that will not even go to a go to the beach and wear a swimsuit. <laughs> so taking my clothes off in front of um, people, profoundly uncomfortable. But yes, I I think your work is incredible. You know that, as does everyone that's listened to this episode. And you could see the empowerment and the emotion from the models. And I think when creatives can do that through their hairdressing, through their fashion designing, through their words, through their art, through their makeup, um, through their kindness, yeah, when you can help to embolden other people and empower other people, that is a gift. So if you, yes. if you bring it back, um, neon. I hear it. I hear it's your new. Your I'm new still thing. doing the neon, and I tell you one thing: you're only going to be uncomfortable for five seconds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Listen, by the time you by the time you and I got talking, it would be would be would be fine. So, um, yeah, it wouldn't take long. Well, let's do it. I'm I'm in. I'm in. All right, stay tuned, everyone. There could be, <laughs> there could be some images coming. Um, Vicky, thank you so much. This was such such a delightful conversation. So lovely to connect with you again thank you for being so gracious and saying yes cannot wait to see what you do next i'm so curious and thank you for inspiring us all today and so i just want to say thank you for uh creating this platform i think it's you know it's 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 time where a lot of us don't know where we are what we're doing and i think it'll be really helpful for, you know, I have listened to some of your uh, past ones and I think they're inspiring and they're beautiful. And thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I feel so humble and grateful and all of that, that you want to listen to my story. Thank you for reminding me of what I've done because sometimes I'm human. I forget things because you just go on with everyday moment in life and, you know, trying to keep up with all these uh, new trends, right? <laughs> All these new trends. And you know what? Sometimes we just, um, we forget to take a moment and celebrate ourselves. So I'm, I'm grateful that I got to celebrate you today and share your amazing, amazing work and inspiration with everyone listening. Um, Thanks, Vicky. Thank you. As we conclude our episode with Vicky Steckel on Creative Thrive, it's evident that her creative journey is as vibrant as her work. Vicky's belief that creativity is everywhere, even in the simple act of getting out of bed some days, really resonated with me. She fully embraces life, viewing each moment as a valuable source of inspiration, whether it's filled with joy or challenge. This mindset is a powerful reminder for all of us that creativity isn't just in the grand actions. It's embedded in our everyday existence and we can always tap into it. Vicky advocates for a life of constant learning and exploration, and she encourages us to stay adaptable, to welcome life's surprises, and to dive into the unknown to sharpen our creative ability and see where the journey leads us. She's fully engaged in all aspects of life, the comfortable and the uncomfortable, and using these experiences to propel her forward and feed her creativity. And when Vicky was confronted with the critique that her work might be too loud, Vicky didn't just continue, she amplified her efforts, 
proving the importance of staying true to ourselves and the impact of our own unique voices. Thank you, Vicky, for sharing your passion and your insights with us all. And to everyone listening, let's remember that every step of our journey is a chance for creative expression. The highs, the lows, the peace and the chaos, they're all part of our unique journey and the way that we can creatively express ourselves. So until next time, let's commit to living creatively, approaching life with open hearts and minds, and always ready to turn up the volume on our creative path. And for those that would like to delve deeper into their creativity and personal growth, join me at Thrive Hive, where we explore all of these topics and more with live monthly classes. Visit thrivehive.co for more information. And please show your support for Creative Thrive by following, liking, and subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. Your interaction lets us shed more light on these inspiring journeys of creatives. Until we meet again, keep nurturing your creative spirit and don't hesitate to let it soar. See you next time on Creative Thrive.